Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Mark. I'm an interventional cardiologist in practice in Colorado. Uh, this is my first YouTube video. Uh, hopefully if uh, there's an appetite for the uh, types of information I'll be talking about, um, this will be the first of many uh, videos. Uh, but I wanted to uh, start off with the topic of what is a heart attack. Um, that uh, may seem like a, a basic question, but I think uh, a lot of people actually don't um, really know what it means uh, or what is happening when they're having a heart attack. Uh, in general, a heart attack or a myocardial infarction, uh, as it's called technically, uh, basically means that you have a situation where the heart is, uh, uh, where the heart muscle is not getting an adequate supply of uh, oxygen rich uh, blood. And uh, that can happen for a variety of reasons. Now, there are actually uh, multiple different types of heart attacks, um, but, in, uh, but typically when we're talking about a heart attack, um, the vast majority of the time we're talking about the kind where um, the heart attack is caused by a blockage in one of the coronary arteries of the heart. Um, the coronary arteries are the blood vessels that uh, come off of the aorta and feed uh, blood uh, to the heart muscle itself. Now, um, what happens to cause the uh, blockage in the coronary artery is typically that over a number of years, uh, you build a plaque in the wall of the artery, and that plaque is mostly comprised of uh, cholesterol and um, types of white blood cells that the body uh, uses to uh, try to digest and deal with that cholesterol. Um, but the blockage or plaque is actually in the wall of the artery and um, there's a thin layer of tissue uh, covering the plaque and one day if that uh, thin layer of tissue uh, breaks down or erodes uh, such that the contents of the plaque are now exposed to the bloodstream uh, we say that the plaque is ruptured and that is uh, typically what causes a heart attack um, all of a sudden, when the contents of that plaque are exposed to the bloodstream in the artery, the body reacts by forming a clot. Um, so you can actually have a relatively mild narrowing in the artery to start with, um, but when that plaque ruptures and a clot forms, um, the artery can become severely blocked or even 100% um, blocked as a result of that. Um, now, for this kind of... Uh, typical heart attack, uh, which I would, uh, I guess, describe as a plaque rupture type of heart attack, there are two general categories. Um, the first is what we call a uh, non-ST elevation myocardial infarction, or N-STEMI, uh, and then the other one is uh, what we would call an ST elevation myocardial infarction, or STEMI, um, for short. Uh, basically, the difference between those is that with a um, non-ST elevation MI, you have a, enough of a blockage in the artery to limit the blood flow to cause the heart attack, but the artery is, not, uh, is typically not 100% blocked. Um, on the other hand, with the ST elevation MI, uh, you typically do have a complete blockage of the artery. Um, the way that they get the different names and how you tell the difference between the two is, is when you do an EKG on a person who's having a heart attack. Um, if the artery is not uh, completely blocked, um, you may see certain uh, changes on the EKG, uh, but you typically don't see what you see when the artery is 100% blocked, and that is on the EKG there's this uh, segment called the ST segment, we can talk about that in another um, video, but uh, basically when the artery is 100% blocked, that segment on the EKG changes and you'll see it become elevated and hence the name ST elevation MI. The reason the distinction between the two is important is that if the artery is 100% blocked, um, as you can imagine, there is no blood flow to the heart muscle in that situation and it's an absolute emergency to get the artery opened as quickly as you can. Um, so if uh, you happen to have that type of heart attack and um, uh, 
uh, you go to the emergency room and they see those changes on your EKG, uh, typically they uh, you will call in a uh, interventional cardiologist like myself to uh, come in and take you um, to the cardiac catheterization lab uh, as quickly as possible to do a heart catheterization procedure to then uh, open up the blocked artery. Um, I'll come back to that in a minute, but um, uh, so that's basically the the, uh, uh, the most common type of heart attack, and then of that type of heart attack, the sort of two uh, subtypes. So the next thing I'd like to talk about is uh, what you might feel if you're having a heart attack. Um, the uh, the textbook uh, typical description of uh, what you might feel would be a um, pressure or tightness or heaviness in the chest, um, usually in the center or a little bit to the left side. Um, sometimes along with that, you can get um, a radiation of that discomfort down into the left arm. Some people will feel it uh, travel up into their neck and into their jaw. Um, along with the discomfort, a lot of times people will have uh, shortness of breath, uh, sometimes also uh, nausea, um, sometimes uh, sweatiness, and uh, some people have this sort of vague uh, sense of impending doom, uh, as it's called. Um, now that's the uh, you know, textbook typical description. Um, I will tell you, uh, after having taken care of thousands of people with heart attacks, um, unfortunately not everybody has the typical symptoms. Um, this is particularly true for women uh, who may have um, more atypical symptoms or more subtle symptoms. Uh, and also uh, patients with diabetes um, uh, oftentimes will have uh, more subtle symptoms or unfortunately uh, sometimes no symptoms. So those are the symptoms uh, of a heart attack. Now, if you uh, were having any of those symptoms or were suspicious that you may be having a heart attack, uh, obviously you wanna uh, get to the closest emergency room as quickly as possible, um, preferably uh, by calling 911 and having an ambulance take you. Um, but what happens uh, once you get to the hospital and uh, if you, know, you are found to be having a heart attack? Well, um, you know, there are certain uh, medications that are used. Um, uh, typically, you'll uh, be given aspirin uh, if you haven't already taken it uh, before coming in. Um, <clears throat> the, um, you'll also typically be put on uh, heparin, which is a blood thinner that's given through an IV. Um, you know, as you can imagine, there's a, a clot in the artery, and so you're um, wanting to use medications to try to help. Um, break up or dissolve the clot and also keep it from um, getting worse. Uh, the aspirin uh, does that basically by um, kind of keeping the platelets in your blood from sticking together and then the uh, heparin uh, is also a, a blood thinner and, and a more uh, potent one for that matter. Um, there are other medicines that are typically used. Um, you'll typically be um, put on one of the statin cholesterol medicines that uh, may happen uh, later on in the course of things, um, and that's uh, largely because the statin uh, cholesterol medicines uh, seem to help with um, stabilizing plaque in the arteries. That's um, the statins are um, medications like Lipitor, or, you know, Crestor, Zocor, um, and then there's a couple other medicines that uh, will typically get started later on in the hospital course that are technically blood pressure medicines, but they can um, essentially help protect the heart and help it uh, help the muscle recover after there's been a heart attack. And those are uh, medicines like the beta blockers, um, such as metoprolol or um, uh, carbidolol or atenolol, and then uh, another class of blood pressure medicines called the ACE inhibitors, and that's uh, medicines like lisinopril or enalapril. Um, now, if you were having that uh, ST elevation MI type of heart attack, uh, heart attack that we talked about before, um, if you uh, say live uh, somewhere, uh, you know, kind of outside of a major city, and you uh, 
present to a hospital uh, that does not have a, a heart catheterization lab, uh, they will typically uh, want to transfer you to a hospital that does have a cardiac catheterization lab and the ability to do the heart catheterization procedure that I mentioned earlier. Um, depending on how far away you are from one of those facilities, uh, they may try to um, basically abort the heart attack uh, before transferring you by giving you a, a type of clot busting medicine to hopefully break up the clot and restore um, blood flow down the artery uh, before transferring you. Um, that type of uh, medication is, uh, is called thrombolytic therapy and there's a, a couple different types. Now, uh, you know, hopefully you are at a, a hospital that has a, a heart catheterization lab if you're having that ST elevation MI, um, in which case you would go, you know, as quickly as possible to the heart catheterization lab. Now, if you're not having an ST elevation MI, let's say you're having the other kind, the non-ST elevation MI, um, you still ideally uh, should be undergoing a heart catheterization pretty early on in your course. Um, and uh, so I think now I would like to kind of explain exactly what happens with the heart catheterization procedure. Now a heart catheterization or um, cardiac catheterization or coronary angiogram, that, uh, all of those are the same thing. And the way that's done is, um, you know, after having the procedure explained to you in, in great detail and you know, including the risks and the benefits, um, uh, you'll have to sign a consent form. Um, and then uh, you'll be given typically a couple of medications through an IV that uh, make you drowsy and keep you comfortable. Um, one, you know, typically we give you a, a pain medication and then a, a, like an anti-anxiety medication and they both um, you know, uh, make you comfortable for the procedure. It's what we call uh, conscious sedation as opposed to uh, general anesthesia where you're completely out. Um, there's a couple different ways to get up to the heart. Um, the two most common are to either go through um, the artery and the wrist, which is the radial artery here, uh, or sometimes we'll go through the artery and the groin, which is the um, femoral artery. But um, whichever site you go through, uh, basically you numb up the area with some uh, lidocaine numbing medicine typically. And then once that area is numb, um, the cardiologist will make a, a poke into the artery with a very small uh, needle. And then that lets us insert a short tube about that long. Um, that's called a sheath and uh, that uh, sheath has like a little one-way valve on the back end of it and so um, once it's in place in the artery um, then you don't have to be poked anymore because we can just slide our equipment in and out through that um, sheath and basically we go in with these long uh, thin uh, hollow tubes that are called catheters um, so you you know come in through that sheath and then if it's you're coming through the arm you'll come up through the arm and then down into the aorta um, you know, which is where the coronary arteries of the heart come off. Um, there are some variations, but you know, typically there's a left coronary artery and a right coronary artery. If you're having the kind of heart attack that, uh, where the artery is 100% blocked, we can generally have an idea about which artery it is based on which part of the EKG um, has those ST elevations I've talked to you about before. Um, regardless, we uh, look at you know, both arteries when we're in there. Um, the way we do that is basically you take the, the tip of that uh, catheter tube is just kind of um, hooked into the entrance to the coronary artery. That uh, then allows us to inject contrast dye through that catheter tube into the artery and that makes it show up under an x-ray camera that's being moved around you. And um, it's usually pretty quick to get the pictures we need, uh, probably, you know, 10 to 15 minutes of actual procedure time once we get started, not counting all the setup. Um, from there, I would say there are three uh, general possibilities. Um, number one, uh, sometimes uh, we actually don't find significant blockages or uh, just you know mild plaque that can be treated with medications. 
Um, you know, you can rupture a plaque in an artery, um, get a clot, and then have it break up and clear by the time you get to the cath lab. So there isn't always a significant blockage identified. Um, the second uh, possibility, which I think is probably the most common uh, scenario if you are truly having a heart attack, is that we will find a significant blockage. Um, significant usually means that there's a narrowing of the artery of at least 70% and or there's evidence of a ruptured plaque with associated clot. Um, in that event, the majority of the time we are able to treat that while we're in there doing the heart catheterization. And uh, we do that by uh, threading a, a very small wire uh, down through the catheter tube and down into the coronary artery and then inflating um, or sliding a, a small balloon over that wire into the area where the blockage is and then we inflate the balloon to open it up. Um, that is called balloon angioplasty. Uh, and then almost always after we do that, we um, put in what's called a stent. And a stent is like a little mesh uh, metal scaffold. Um, so it starts out, you know, collapsed down on a balloon we uh, thread it into place uh, over that wire, then you inflate the balloon and it expands the stent and pushes it into the wall of the artery. Um, the reason we do that is that the stent acts like a scaffold basically to keep the artery from uh, re-narrowing after you've uh, ballooned it. Um, if you have a stent put in, the total length of the procedure is probably going to be about an hour. Um, uh, it can be shorter, it can be longer, it just kind of depends on the, the specifics. Um, sometimes it takes you know, more than one stent to um, treat the blockage, and sometimes we actually find more than one significant blockage at the same time. Now the third um, possibility is sometimes we see significant blockages, but there are some situations where um, open heart uh, bypass surgery um, is thought to uh, maybe be better than having stents put in. That's typically if uh, you have multiple severe blockages at the same time, um, or if uh, this specific uh, part of the left coronary artery called the left main has a, a significant blockage. Um, if it looks like one of those situations, um, then uh, you know after the catheterization is done, um, the cardiologist would you know, talk to you about the findings, and then with your permission, they'd have a heart surgeon um, come talk to you, uh, look at your cath films, and, and talk to the cardiologist. And um, if everybody agreed that you know open heart bypass surgery was the best way to go, and that's what you wanted to have done, then it would be done um, you know, typically another day. That is a much bigger procedure um, that uh, the surgeon would talk to you about in great detail. Um, you know, in the future I can talk about it in another uh, video, uh, but it's a little bit beyond the scope of this. Um, so, uh, after the heart catheterization, um, you know, if, you've, if you have had a heart attack, you typically are in the hospital for uh, a couple days. Um, the point of that is basically that um, you know, we generally, once somebody's gone to the cath lab and had the blockage taken care of, we uh, generally don't have problems after that, but um, if you were gonna have an issue, it would typically be kind of in that first 48 hours after the heart attack. Um, and what do I mean by problems? Well, that's things like certain abnormal heart rhythms uh, would be the kind of one of the main ones, um, or sometimes you can have other um, like mechanical issues with the heart if there's been uh, really significant damage. Um, while you're in the hospital, typically you're you know put on those medications I touched on earlier, and then um, once you get out of the hospital, uh, you know oftentimes you'll um, be referred to a cardiac rehab program, which is basically like uh, supervised exercise. Um, and, uh, and then you'll have follow up with the cardiologist um, in their clinic um, so that they can make sure that uh, you're doing well and that going forward you're controlling everything you have control over to hopefully keep you from ever having another heart attack again. And that's making sure your 
diet uh, is good, your exercise program is good, that your um, blood pressure is good, that your cholesterol is good, um, etc. Um, so that is basically uh, what a heart attack is and uh, the typical symptoms that you might feel with one and uh, how it would be uh, typically treated. Well, I, I hope that you found the information in this video uh, useful. If you did, please uh, hit the like and subscribe buttons. Um, if you have any questions, um, please um, ask them in the comments below and I'll, I'll try to answer them as best as I can. Um, and uh, if you enjoyed this video and um, uh, people want to see more, I'd uh, like to create more videos on other topics. Um.